Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to all the witnesses here today. Uh, Ms. Dory, uh, I welcome this administration's decision to strategically withdraw U.S. forces from Afghanistan by September 11th, uh, 2021. I, I must say, though, that the difference between this administration and the previous administration is that it seems that we're doing it with our allies, and we're doing it in close coordination and collaboration instead of hearing about a tweet uh, and our commanders not really being in the loop. So I appreciate that. But the, still, the question that stays as a significant issue is, well, what is our plan? That was my criticism before uh, with the previous administration, and that's, I think, what we're all looking to better understand. What is the plan as we leave Afghanistan? Um, so if you could answer that and then uh, help me understand what President Biden meant when he said, we'll reorganize our counterterrorism capabilities and the substantial assets in the region to prevent reemergence of terrorism. Well, can you elaborate on that statement? Thank, thank you, Congressman. This administration has reinvigorated a focus on alliances and partnerships, and I think you see it in the work that has been underway to support taking a decision with respect to the future of the, the U.S. Uh, force posture in Afghanistan. So the intensive engagement that we saw most recently with uh, NATO and coalition partners with respect to the, the decision to draw down in Afghanistan in the, in the very near term, there is detailed planning underway, as you heard General McKenzie refer to a few moments ago with respect to how the force drawdown will, will proceed in conjunction with allies and partners, separate planning underway with respect to what the uh, counterterrorism footprint will look like going forward, given the, the focus uh, in Afghanistan, the, the primary vital interest that has sustained us over time being to ensure that there are no attacks emanating from Afghanistan with respect to the U.S. homeland. And we'll, we'll have uh, in the classified uh, briefings later today, we'll be able to get into that into a lot more detail. Okay. Does that include what our footprint will look like moving forward? Well, I, I think what we, we understand is from here into September that we'll have, we will not have combat forces, U.S. or coalition combat forces there and we will transition to a diplomatically oriented footprint uh, with the U.S. Embassy. Thank you. Can you provide us with an update on where the intra-Afghan peace talks are at at this point? I think uh, Ambassador Khalilzad will be one of the panelists in the briefings later this afternoon and will be well postured to give a just, just a fresh update on those talks. Great, thank you. General McKenzie, in your testimony, you comment that CENTCOM is committed to working with interagency partners to develop mechanisms that ensure continued oversight of and accountability of the Afghanistan Security Forces Fund. What oversight tools do we currently use that will be important to continue after the withdrawal? How will our, our, our oversight adapt to having a limited presence on the ground? The principal tool that we use to manage the oversight of the disbursement of those funds and the proper use of it are the people on the ground that see what happens to it and, and monitor that. As we draw down, that's going to become our principal challenge. How do we do that from a remote location? A lot will depend on the size of the U.S. Embassy that remains, and we have not yet finally determined that, and that's something that we're in, in, in talking about planning right now. The smaller the embassy is, the more difficult it will be become to manage the ASFF as we go forward. We're keenly aware of that. That is right at the centerpiece of our planning, and we're working very closely with the Department of State to make those determinations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I yield back. Thank you, Representative Carbajal.